My favourite thing about doing a PhD, as strange as this might sound, is that we get to be at like the forefront of discovery and knowledge. The idea that we have to have contributed uh, a novel finding to human knowledge in order for me to get my PhD. I think it's just really exciting and quite cool, really. My name's Adrian, and my PhD is on the evolution of antibiotic resistance. Specifically, I look at sublethal concentrations of antibiotic and how they are contributing to the resistance crisis that we are facing. So you can sample the water systems around this country and around the world, and you will find very trace amounts of antibiotics there. Current statistics are that there are 1.4 million people that die every year from antimicrobial resistant infections, and that is set to rise to 10 million people per year by the year 2050, which will put it on par with the number of deaths that we see from all cancers combined. So I wanted to work on this to kind of do my bit to try and avoid those predictions becoming true, basically. I never thought that I'd end up doing a PhD, um, but I always really liked biology. During my undergrad, I did a summer research project for eight weeks, and I really enjoyed that. I feel like that's where I really started to get my passion for research and for science, is just having my own little research project to work on. And then when it came to the end of my undergraduate degree, um, my personal tutor asked me, well, would you be interested in a PhD? And I was like, oh, I didn't really realise that was a thing you could do. Started looking through the projects, um, applied to quite a few different PhD projects um, all around antibiotic resistance and ultimately ended up here. <laughs> I'm funded by the Engineering and Physics Research Council. That kind of resembles um, how interwoven science is in many ways. Um, a lot of what I do is a little bit of physics and a little bit of computer science. It's a very interdisciplinary building and we like to merge the different subjects together because you know, nature doesn't naturally categorise itself into biology or physics or chemistry. I've been to quite a few different conferences. It's always a really good experience to have that opportunity to disseminate your research and kind of uh, bounce ideas off each other. It's a really good environment. I've been on some training courses about programming. As I went through my studies, I just realised how useful it is and how powerful it can be, especially some of the work I do is about um, DNA sequencing as well as some image analysis where we, I take images of the bacteria. Um, so I have to then analyze those images to figure out what's going on. So I went on some courses that were about image analysis. Um, I've been involved in teaching ever since I started my PhD um, in various capacities. Sometimes as a biology student, I've also done sort of more formal teaching. I quite enjoy it actually, having that experience of um, teaching. I think Exeter as a place is a great place to live and study as well. I think it's quite a welcoming environment. One of the best things that I've had since I've been here is actually like support network of my friends, like the other PhD students that are here. It's really important to have that like strong support network around you.